the EP Podcast. Heard everywhere podcasts can be found. And always at the eppodcast.com. And if you are paying attention to the opening ad here on the EP Podcast, Durbin's of Evergreen Park, right up there at about 102nd in Kedzie, has a special deal going on right now, 10% off when you mention the EP Podcast. Remember, that place is basically under new management over the last couple of months. Upgrades to the kitchen, upgrades to the facility, a great menu, make sure you check them out. Remember, they have previously been featured on an Eating Evergreen Park segment on a previous episode of the EP Podcast. If you go to the eppodcast.com, just search any keyword now and you can find any episode you want to. Review any restaurant in Evergreen Park. Today is one of those shows that people will be searching for in the future in case they missed it, because today is our summer 2021 Eating Evergreen Park episode. 30 minutes of food in Evergreen Park. It is all brought to you by the First National Bank of Evergreen Park. Who knows that having a bank that can deliver under pressure makes all the difference. And when the pandemic hit, local businesses needed help securing Paycheck Protection Program loans. And their employees worked to help 13 local places get more than $3 million in loans. They saved more than 200 local jobs. They are the official bank of the EP podcast. They are great supporters, not only because they put their name on the show, but also because whenever I have a problem, they are there to help me. They also have those amazing EP podcast car magnets available even if you go through the drive-thru and you don't even have to bank there. So stop in, see what they can do for you, that iconic building at 95th and Pulaski, or visit bankevergreenpark.com slash for you, member FDIC, equal housing lender. I flipped a coin before the show to try to figure out which location we would visit first on Eating Evergreen Park, And Tavern in the Green won. Let's go there now on the EP Podcast, found everywhere podcasts can be found and always at the eppodcast.com. EP Podcast is out right now at Tavern in the Green. I've been waiting to get out here for a long time and visit, but this guy is maybe one of the busiest people in all of Evergreen Park because he not only has Tavern, He's got Pappy's down the street. George Pappas is sitting with us. How are you, George? Hey, Chris. How are you? Thank you so much for having us. You have a lot of family that works here. Like, you, like the guy at the door tonight is your brother, right? My brother, John, yes. And who's this guy sitting next to you? Tommy O. That's my partner, Tommy O. Okay, so this, this is not relation. This is a partner right here, right? It's, it's basically family. Yeah. Family. He's been with us a long time. This is like a big family establishment, isn't it? Yes, sir. Yes. So I remember when you guys opened up here in Evergreen and to me it felt like you were the first like it it was almost like you would you would raise the bar in Evergreen Park in terms of like a place to go out and hang out you know it was a really nice new place you got a big beautiful bar that's here and you got the big screen TVs all over the place how long ago was that George? January 2014 and what brought you to decide that you wanted to open up a a place because you already had Pappy's down the street so Tommy and I were in Florida and um, we were just sitting around at a bar having a couple of drinks, talking, and we said, hey, we need to open up a sports bar in, in, in Evergreen. We're big sports fans, and we wanted to have something a little nicer, uh, great food, and sit and watch the game and just chill, and we just made it happen. And you're talking about the food, and we're going to talk about it here in a second. Actually, why don't I just get to Hannah first? Tell me about what she has on her plate because she's been raving about it to me. Yeah, I know. This is a Reuben, and what did you say that you were worried about when the Reuben came and luckily you were not upset? I am a Reuben snob. I am always afraid when I order a Reuben, it's going to have too much dressing on it. I'm just going to taste Thousand Island. I'm not going to taste the corned beef, and that was not the case. Sometimes when I go somewhere, I have to take the bread off and scrape off the dressing. Didn't have to do that here. I could taste the beef. I could taste the flavor in the beef, and it was so good. So what, what's the thought process behind your Reuben? How long have you guys had this on the menu here? Well, we cook everything here. It's all made fresh. So um, 
I mean, that just brings it to the next level. Uh, everything we make is made from scratch and, and, and all fresh. Salmon, your wife is having a salmon salad. We get the whole fish in and, and fillet it and clean it and back. It's There's just nothing better. We get salmon in our house, I think, once a week. You know, during Lent, it's a salmon fest in the uh, Lanuti household. Sweetheart, what did, you, what did you like about this one? Well, I had the salmon salad, which was great, but I saw on the menu that there was other options to have it as a sandwich and also as an entree. So if you love salmon, um, please come and get it either way. Um, I liked it because it was blackened a little bit and it had a great flavor to it. So much that I did not want to eat it with the salad dressing at all. Um, (laughs) And just so you know, their salads are not little portion salads. They're a big salad. So (laughs) it was was delicious. When you guys came up with the menu, tell me a little bit about that because there's a different flavor, you know, wherever you look on the menu. I mean, we're going to get to what I'm eating right now, but I'm eating Italian food. We got a salmon salad over here. We've got we've got a Reuben. That's a completely different style. Uh, your wings. I've always been a big fan of your wings and the way that you serve them. Um, what was the concept for the menu? What were you guys aiming for? I mean, I think in the beginning we there was a lot on there, but over time you realize what sells and what doesn't, and you know what people prefer. So you know we always make changes, and we also have our seasonal menus that we add, and those have different options as well. So, like, for the summer, you guys will kind of change things up, decide, like, you know, I want to, we're going to do something a little bit lighter or something maybe for people on the on the patio. You've, you've got a nice little patio area outside and I'm sure got overused over the last year that will still be there. But luckily now you got people that are indoors and able to enjoy the, the inside of the restaurant as well. When you come up with the menu, what is it? You get you get a head chef that, like, does it all? You got somebody, somebody who kind of, like, steers everything in a certain direction? There's a couple of us that get involved. Ness, my GM, and myself, and the chef. Um, we sit down and we just talk about what's kind of hot for the time and um, just cook a bunch of different dishes and try and cook it over and over and over till we get it perfect and then and then we put it on paper and run with it. Let's talk a little bit about the community that you're a part of. Evergreen Park, I think, probably reacted to the events of the last year and a half better than I would say the vast majority of areas in this country. I mean, it seemed like people really pulled together here and tried to do everything they could. I know that I have eaten out more and taken had more takeout than I had ever had in my entire life because I think people didn't want to, to see places like Tavern in the Green uh, not be around when this thing was over. Can you talk a little bit about the people that come in here, your regulars, and uh, what it was like over the last year? I'm born and raised in Evergreen Park, and Evergreen Park is amazing. The uh, the support from the community, it, I, I'm just at a loss of words. They're, they're phenomenal. Their phone calls, and when we were closed in the beginning, people would call daily asking when we're going to open up, and the support has been it's just been amazing it really has they're fabulous and you're you're kind of a family place i mean you're you're a sports pub but i bring my kids in here you know that's something that i'll do i'll I'll come in here like i was telling you guys before we sat down it was a normal thing for us especially on weekdays when my daughter was playing the softball at the epgsl and i'm coaching her team and we get done with the game and i'd be like I just need a beer. My wife's like, I don't want to cook. It's late. And we're sitting at Tavern in the Green. So you get families that come in here, and it's a nice family-friendly joint. Definitely. I mean, when we first opened up, we thought it would be more of a bar type, but we've realized that it's definitely a bar restaurant. We have more high chairs here than we have at Pappy's. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we never we never thought that would happen. But So let's talk about this dish that I'm having right here, and I'm going to be honest with you. I, being of Italian descent with the last name of Lanuti, do not order Italian food when I go into a place that's not an Italian restaurant. It's just something I don't do. Like, when we sat down, I was like, all right, well, what, what do you guys do good? Like, what do you, what do you want to talk about tonight? Like, what would, be, what would be something that we'd want to try? And George goes, no, we're going to uh, we're gonna get you the chicken parm. And I was like, all right, we'll do the chicken parm. And I had, I had kind of like some low expectation. This is really good. I'm going to tell you something right now. Like, first of all, the cut of meat, it's a big piece of chicken, but it's also, it's thin and it's juicy. It's not dried out or anything like that. There's not too much breading on it. It, it is it is really well put together. And I, I got to tell you, bravo. I mean, we're, how, how hard did you have to work to get this recipe right? Uh, we put a lot of time into it and a lot of thought. And uh, it's just the ingredients. We just use top of the line ingredients and... Um, 
it's on the money every time you order it, even as a sandwich. It's just, it's fabulous. I, I had a question for you because you, yeah, I know Hannah's eating off my plate. What are you eating? You're eating my food. Oh, so good. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me a little bit about the bar because I think it's one of the great features inside of this place. Uh, you know, it's got some lighting that's around it. It's a stone base to it. It's very smooth on the top. Uh, it's really, really sleek. Got the big uh, TVs all around it. And you have a really extensive tap. What goes into the thought process for what you guys are keeping on tap? Because some of these are some pretty solid craft beers that you have sitting up here on it. So I mean, who, who goes through the beer selection and figures out what's going to be available at the tavern? That's our GM, Ness. He, he takes care of all that. And um, he reads a lot. He knows what's hot in the markets. And um, uh, we have probably four handles that we rotate pretty often to try to keep the, um, the hottest one on. Uh, we also clean our lines every two weeks, which is huge. A lot of people don't do that. And a draft beer drinker will know that as soon as they have a draft beer. You have some construction going on. I think I know what it's for because we've had a couple of trustees on here to talk about it. Is this room the video gaming room? And is are you also gonna have it in the corner there too? You got it two spots? Yeah. So we'll have uh, four machines on this end and then two in the other. So six total. Yeah, and you've got it, you've got the walls up like the like we've heard from uh, Mark Marzullo and Norm Anderson who have been in here where they've said that they want it closed off. I mean, how much of a difference is that going to make for you guys, especially coming out of the last year and a half? It's going to be very helpful. You know, we we don't have any other locations which have gaming, so it's hard to tell. But from what we hear, it's going to be very helpful. The good thing is that um, we lose customers every night and they go to Oak Lawn to game. So now they're going to be able to stay here and continue eating and drinking. And, and if they choose the game, it's going to be available. Right. So what you were getting is you were getting people that were starting here and then they decide, let's gamble. And then they're walking out the door and they're going, they're leaving Evergreen Park. Correct. Every night we would get that. Now they're going to be stuck here with us. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's not, it's not a bad spot to be stuck at, right, Anna? It's a very good spot to be stuck at. The food is so good. Well, I, I love it. I love everything about the place. I think it's great that we finally got to sit down and talk and just kind of chat with you and and learn a little bit about Tavern and the Green. Uh, I saw that you got very excited when I said the name right. Do people screw it up a lot? On. Everybody says yeah, on. On the green. Yeah, it's in the green because we're in evergreen, right? I, how do people not get this concept, George? I, I have no idea, but they mess it up every time. Yeah. They're consistently messing it up. If somebody walks in here for the first time and and they've never been to Tavern, is there a food item, you know, appetizer, dessert, uh, drink, something that you would want them to try to, uh, to get the full experience here at Tavern in the Green. You guys nailed it with all the items you were talking about. <laughs> get the Reuben. Get the Reuben. Get the Reuben. Yeah. With the sweet potato that. fries. They have a ribeye steak wrap that is phenomenal too. I always get that when I come in here. Uh, you see, Erica's Erica's uh, off of the off of the menu for tonight. Rem remembering stuff that she's had here before, so she likes the the ribeye wrap as well. You guys have a great menu; it's very extensive. I, I don't know how you could walk in here and not find something that you would love, and I don't know how you could come in here and not feel comfortable because it's perfect for adults without kids, and if you got kids in tow, it's perfect for them as well. And it's just a just a great family spot, great neighborhood spot, and I appreciate you guys having us out. Thank you very much, Chris. now time for your EP podcast, Word on the Street, brought to you by Cool Clouds Vapor Shop right here in Evergreen Park. Quitting smoking is hard and at Cool Clouds, they are focused on getting you off of cigarettes. They have amazing options for you to check out. They have experts right there to talk to you, plus an incredible array of CBD products. Get over there, 3837 West 95th Street. Beautiful weather this weekend. Maybe you got out to the driving range at 50 Acre Park, 91st in Rockwell. Remember, you can get out there anytime. They got food, drinks on the premises, and gift certificates are available if you're thinking of a gift for Dad for Father's Day. Reach out for more information at the Rec Department, 3450 West 97th Street. It was a nice weekend, but it wasn't the heat that I wanted for Memorial Day. If you are looking for it to get warmer, look no further. Mother Nature has a calendar and just realized it's time to switch on summer. We will climb through the 70s for the next few days, and then by Friday, highs in the mid-80s. 
And by Sunday, we're gonna touch 90 degrees. This week, also remember that Monday was a holiday for waste management. So whatever your day is for recyclables and trash, it happens a day later this week in Evergreen Park. In about a week, on June 8th, that's a Tuesday, the Evergreen Park Fire Department over at 9000 South Kedzie Avenue is going to be having a senior health fair, 10 a.m. until 2 p.m. on the 8th. This annual event open to community seniors and their caregivers. There will be light refreshments provided and the Evergreen Park minibus is available for transportation if you need that. 708-422-8776. And do not forget that the fire department will help you put in a child care seat. They also have CPR classes for the community. Details on that, 708 422 2148. That's your EP Podcast Word on the Street found everywhere. Podcast can be found and always at the EPPodcast.com. Evergreen Park has a brand new sandwich shop, and this place is awesome. I'm talking about Unbeatable Eatables, northwest corner of 95th and Kedzie. Unbeatable Eatables prides themselves on having the highest quality meats and cheeses on the market. They also use twice as much meat and cheese as their competitors. And now with Father's Day approaching, they are giving away a three-foot party sub so you can chow down with dad. Visit unbeatableeatables.com EP on Instagram or Facebook and find the Father's Day giveaway post. Then you're a like, a follow, the tagging of three of your friends, and a post away from winning that sub. Complete rules and details on those social media posts. Whether you're feeding the office for lunch, the family for dinner, or catering an event, Unbeatable Eatables has an unbeatable menu. Unbeatable Eatables on the northwest corner of 95th and Kedzie. Enjoy sub heaven at Unbeatable Eatables. You know, we did visit Unbeatable Eatables recently, within the last month or so, here on the EP Podcast and did an Eating Evergreen Park segment with them. So after you listen to the summer 2021 Eating Evergreen Park here on the EP Podcast, go to the eppodcast.com or any podcast player that you listen to the EP Podcast on and find that episode at the website, the new and improved eppodcast.com. You can go into a search engine, throw in the keywords like you write in unbeatable eatables, and right away, the episode pops up. You could do that for any episode of the EP podcast. Meanwhile, let's go back out and try another restaurant here in Evergreen Park that we have never reviewed. And I probably haven't been to this place because, to me, it wasn't new. Back when I was a little kid, my dad would get me in the car and drive me over to Rosangela's on 95th Street to go pick up a pizza, and that was a regular thing in my family. As my kids have grown up, we have spent countless nights sitting inside of that place, eating a pizza, and having a lot of very loud belly laughs. It is a family restaurant that I have always enjoyed, and recently they pretty much doubled in size. If you have not been to Rosangela's, we're going to check it out with you. The new and improved, twice the size, brand new bar inside of it, Still the same great pizza, Rosangela's, is next right here on Eating Evergreen Park. And we're located right across from Little Company and Mary at what I think is one of the most iconic pizza places on the south side of Chicago. Okay, Jack Pesci is sitting here with me. We're going to be talking with his son, Ray, here in just a little bit. But right now, I just want to ask Jack, how long have you been here? Because we are sitting at the bar, this brand new, beautiful bar that you have inside of Los Angeles. Now you've done this this huge upgrade to the entire place. It's twice the size now, at least. And, and it's gorgeous, but we were sitting up there, and I was like, oh, I remember when I used to go in here when I was a kid, and you were laughing, like, this place was around a long time before I was a kid. When, when did you guys get started? We started here in 1955. So what was the idea behind it? Just like, you, you just liked making pizzas? Did you ever think it was going to get this big? Uh, well, when I got a job here, I was 19 years old. And to tell you the truth, I don't think I was going to work too much here, too, you know. 19 years old, I don't want to spend my life in a pizza place, you know, with a lot of things to do at that age, dancing and all that. But uh, I said to myself, a couple of months, then I'll move on. Well, long couple of months, I never, I never left. Four years later, I became part owner. So when you started, you were just an employee? Just an employee, right. And then you end up 
uh, uh, taken over the business. Four years later, five years later. So, so why you just fell in love with it? You like the people? I, I love the business. I love to talk to people. I love, I love what I was doing, and I made a career out of it. You've been on this stretch here on 95th now making pizzas for a long time. You've seen a lot of change here in Evergreen change, Park on 95th Street, Street huh? Not the first year. I remember when 95th Street was one lane. <laughs> one lane each way. We, we talked about on the show before. Supposedly there was like a giant chicken or something like out here on 95th. Do you remember that? It was lo- a lot of things. A lot of change in Evergreen. <laughs> I was like, say, I think we are the second oldest business in Evergreen. You do this this upgrade now. Yep. I mean, it, which is... It was about uh, less than two months ago we did this. Yeah, but it was also a daring thing to do because you're in the middle. Yeah. You're in the, in the middle of this exactly. pandemic, and you you expand. But I mean, we you must have been chance. like, we're doing this. We took a chance, you know. I figured, well, nobody was coming in. They shut us down, you know, because of the pandemic, and it was just that pickup and deliveries, you no know, inside business. So I said, the chance came. This place opened up, and we were always talk about when this place would be open. I think it would be nice if we, you know, expand. And when we did leave and we had the chance to take over, we said, you know what, let's do it. This can go on forever, this corona. You know, it won't go on forever. So let's do it now. The people will never miss us. There was nobody coming in. Just do a pickup and deliveries now, and, and that's it, you know. When you guys were expanding, did you, did you think about, well, we want it to look new, but we also don't want to lose the charm that the place had? That's exactly, that's what we did. We wanted, like I said before, we were, we wanted to be the neighbor pizza place. And I think the way it turned out to be, the way the guy that took this on his stuff, that's what we told him. We still want to be close to what's worse, neighbor, you know, still want to be the neighbor pizza place after this. And so then you put in the bar, which I think is a great upgrade because look, I did I did like the I did like the idea when I was standing waiting in line like for a table like on a busy night where I could just be like, well, I'm just going to get a pitcher of beer and I'm going to stand along the window. So like I had no problem with this, but this is even better. Unfortunately, and a weekend, there's a line. <laughs> yeah, it's a good thing. It's not unfortunate. It's a good thing. It was funny. It was a line before the expansion. Now that we expanded, we see more people. It is still a line. <laughs> <laughs> That's because the food's good. So, so tell me, what is the secret of the pizza? Has it I, changed at all no, since it first no, started? No. Since 1955, same pizza. You ate 1955, same pizza today. Nothing changed. And there's no secret family recipe. Fresh ingredients. That's it. No secret recipe, no secret sauce, anything like that. I think the thing that I like the best about it is that you know you have your chicago deep dish and then you have people that you know try to almost mimic the new york style and then you have you have bar pizzas but they're way too thin yours is a is a it's got some thickness to the crust but not too much to it in between everything you know it's not too thin not too thick we think it's just right and a lot 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 people like it when i was pulling up here i saw a mom drop off Two teenage kids to come walk inside the place and start working. How many how many families do you think have worked for Los Angeles over well, here? Let me tell you, we have a waitress. It's a fourth generation of her family working here. Her grandfather used to work here. Her mother used to work here. She works here, and her son works here. Four generation. And I'm proud of that. What's it like also being in a place for as long in Evergreen Park? I mean, we have a lot of business owners that tell us that they feel fortunate that the village has a lot of times tried to help them out. I remember there used to not be parking next to you. Now you have yeah, a lot. Have like, it. how helpful are they? Oh, I'm unbelievable. We owe a lot to the Evergreen Park City Hall. They're the greatest administration. And we owe a lot to them, and uh, they really came, you know, out of their way to, to please us, you know, put a parking lot over there and everything. I mean, we couldn't ask no more. I mean, it was unbelievable. How hard is it to make a pizza? I only ask this because I always see, like, people, like, take the dough and spin it, and it looks like they're great at it. Like, I mean, it, it was. is it hard to learn? No, let me tell you. Uh, I'm 78 years old, and I've been doing this all my life, and I'm still doing it. Not because I needed to, but I love it. That's it's what I did all my life. Right. What a difference, though, if you think about it. You got the brand new spot, and then it, the, instead of an old jukebox, you got this thing that looks like it's got lasers around it. You got, you got, yeah, you got a, you got flat screen TVs now. Nothing with a dial on it. You must feel like you're in the future. I'm telling you, I've been know how those things work. <laughs> <laughs> 
I'm, I'm no big thing over technology. You know, I'm an enhanced kind of a kind of guy. Is there a style of pizza or a specific thing that you make here that maybe people don't realize that you make, that you like, that you, well, you're like, try this, it's good. Is there something that you would tell people when you come into Los Angeles if they've never been in here before, get this? I think what we improve a lot is salad, believe salad. it or not, and, and soup. I think we got the best salad and the best soup for anybody. Our, our cook, his name is Teddy. I don't think anybody makes this soup as good as him. <laughs> and uh, like I said before, and one of the secrets, I wouldn't even call it a secret, is everything's fresh. Today, a lot of a lot of pizza places, open cans, sauces already made up, sausage already cooked. Everything's already pre, pre-cooked, pre-made it. Here, we start from the dough, we make our own dough, we make our own sauce, we season our own sauce, we fresh sausage, fresh pepper, fresh mushroom, fresh everything. And that's, that's just no secret, that's it. No secret recipe, no secret sauce. People are coming in for years. They were young kids. Now they're grandfathers. They bring their kids. Not too long ago, a woman came in. Not too long ago, before we remodel this side. She came in, she came in with a little baby. If I could get her a high chair, she was going to get a high chair, put her by the table. She looked at the chair, she goes, Oh my God. She says, What's wrong? She said, This same chair my mom used to put me in. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Look at all those people. In this great suburb, driving down 95th and Ked Z. What a great place. It's called Evergreen Park, but we know it better as the EP. We're known for more than just the Unabomber. Remember Ted Kaczynski? You guys might even remember that big old rooster on 95th Street. It's all part of EP's history. So listen up to the EP Podcast. You might be asking why. Because we talk about all things and we celebrate all the great things in the 60805. It's the EP Podcast. All things Evergreen Park. It's the EP Podcast. Evergreen Park. Jack Pesci over at Rosangelo's was so much fun to just sit down with, have a pizza, and just talk. And there's actually a great story. He has Brian Piccolo and Gail Sayers and all the Chicago Bears used to come in and get pizza at Rosangelo's. And I took that story and I put it in a recent episode of South Side Pod. It's a brand new podcast from the Broadcast Basement On Demand Radio Network. You can get that full story from Jack anywhere podcasts can be found and always at southsidepod.com. That said, Rosangela is at 2807 West 95th Street in Evergreen Park. They are open every day except for Tuesdays. And like I said, they're like twice the size now. All new, and they still kept that traditional feel. Go check them out. And earlier in the show, do not forget about Tavern in the Green. Thanks so much to them for having us out to kick off Eating Evergreen Park this week. The food is incredible. If you want to check it out, they actually have pictures of all of their items. You can order food online. You can find out more about them. Taverninthegreen.com or just go there. Trust me, you're not going to be disappointed. 3422 West 95th Street, right there in the middle of Evergreen Park. We hope you enjoy this summer of 21 version of Eating Evergreen Park. Remember all of our restaurant reviews, all of our guests, all of our shows available anywhere podcasts can be found and always at the eppodcast.com. They're on demand. You can listen to them anytime. We have a ton of big events and big plans that we are working on for this summer here in the EP. You will hear about them coming up very soon, maybe as soon as Friday, right here on the EP Podcast. Until then, enjoy the warmer weather, and we will see you soon. Thanks for eating Evergreen Park with us. Bye-bye, everybody. Another show is wrapped up. Another show's in the books. Another show is wrapped up. And then by the looks, it's going to be a good one. And we'll see you next week. And the nude is baby. Another show is wrapped up, another show is wrapped up, another show is wrapped up, and it's in the books.
Another show is wrapped up, another show is wrapped up, and by the looks, it's gonna be a good one. Nudie's Basement, broadcast, Basement, the Nudie's Basement, the Broad Basement. Slancha. The EP Podcast. Heard everywhere podcasts can be found and always at the eppodcast.com.